Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today we're gonna break Dark Souls 2. So yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these OP in 1 hour videos, and today we're gonna continue the series by diving into Dark Souls 2, the black sheep of the trilogy. Now I personally have a huge soft spot for Dark Souls 2, it's the first Dark Souls game I actually beat, and despite its problems, I find myself replaying it fairly often, I think it's a fantastic game. So if you're new to Dark Souls or the Dark Souls franchise, today I am going to walk you through how to have pretty much the most baller possible start in Dark Souls 2, and lastly, I should mention I will be referencing the Scholar of the First Sin edition throughout this video, if you happen to be playing vanilla for whatever a reason nothing should be hugely different but i just thought i'd point that out so enough yakking and let's get to it here's how you can be op in an hour in dark souls 2 scholar of the first sin Alrighty, so one of Dark Souls 2's strongest strengths is it has a ton of build diversity when compared to other Souls games. A lot of people have even called Elden Ring Dark Souls 2-2 because of this. However, amongst all the builds, there is one I feel is busted when it comes to beginners, and that is a Rapier build. The Rapier in Dark Souls 2 is obscenely strong, maybe one of the strongest melee weapons in the Souls series, and this is for a variety of reasons which I will go over now. The main one is that it has great range and attack power, making it almost as safe as a spear, but without any downside. Additionally, when you are one-handing it, it's R2 is a parry, while two-handed you can get a more powerful stab. It also has a fantastic counter-attack stat, which I'll get into what that means later, and it does a surprising high amount of poise damage, meaning you can often stun lock most small to mid-sized enemies with little issue. And lastly, since we aren't going to be augmenting it, you can put grease on it to add elemental damage against certain bosses. The secret best thing, however, is there are rings in the game you can get from very early on that amplify this rapier into the stratosphere. So for this build, we're going to go rapier and shield with a bow on the side, and honestly, you need nothing else to carry you through the entire game fairly easily. So as you start off, the starting class doesn't really matter all that much. I usually end up picking Bandit, but really you just need a melee focused one that has decent dex, as you will need 5 strength and 12 dex for the rapier. Addition, the rapier is a dex weapon, so that's going to be our focus. Once you get past the tutorial and enter Majula, it's time for war crime. In the main town on the far end is an NPC called Moglin, the armorer, who runs a shop selling various armors. We are going to find this guy and murder him. Now before I explain why, and I do have a very good reason, I'm going to do a disclaimer on what this means. First, it does lock you out of an achievements. There's one for having every possible NPC in Majula. If he's dead, it won't count. He does respawn in New Game Plus, so it's still possible to get it then. But honestly, this isn't an achievement most people get on the first run anyway, so I don't really worry about it. And secondly, this guy sells boss items after you kill various bosses in the game, so killing him will lock you out of that. But we aren't going to use any of those items besides the Ray Pierre and the bow and just one armor set, so this isn't a big deal anyway. The benefit of killing him, however, is completely insane, as killing him gives the Tessildora set, in which each piece increases souls gained and they are additive. Hat gives 2.5 percent, chest 5 percent, arms 10 percent, and legs 5 percent, leading to a grand total of 22.5 percent more souls by just equipping this gear. We're going to stack this with a ring early for even more souls, which is going to give you so many levels you are going to crush the entire game. Additionally, it is my opinion that armor doesn't actually matter that much in Dark Souls 2 aside from fashion, as vitality, aka more hit point, is generally more valuable than armor. I kid you not when I say I take this set to the end game, every game with no issues whatsoever, although I do swap some pieces with the jester gear down the line. Its benefit of soul gain is basically playing on easy mode, so I highly recommend it. But regardless, once you have that and it's equipped, head to the first area, Forest of Fallen Giants, where we are going to do some farming. So as you progress through the first area, there's two things you'll want to do. First, you're going to learn how to kill that troll near the entrance. He gives 1.2k souls, and knowing how to kill him will be important very soon. Second, you're going to need to progress to the second bonfire next to the shopkeeper. She sells a key for 1k that'll open the blacksmith door back in Majula, so buy that and let him in. Once he's in, buy a rapier for another 1k souls, and congrats, you now have the weapon you're going to use for the entire rest of the game. As you find your Titanite, always prioritize upgrading the rapier before anything else, as this is our most important weapon. And now we're going to go get a really early ring. Head all the way back to the witch's hut in Things Betwixt and back across the bridge, then turn right as there is a secret cave and at the end is a troll who are going to need to kill. They aren't super easy this early, however he won't chase you out of the entry archway, so you can bait him if you wish, and if you happen to get throwing knives while running around through the first power of giants, they do high damage to him and can be used to cheese. Killing him drops the stone ring, an item that is extremely good early on against most small and mid-sized enemies. Basically, it increases the poise damage you do to enemies with each hit, increasing the odds that they will flinch and cancel their attack. Paired with fast weapons that already have pretty good poise damage, like the rapier, and you will be stun-locking large portions of the game. Okay, now head back to the giant's bonfire and get ready to farm a troll, because we're going to need some souls. For this next part, you're going to need to farm and then spend 10,000 souls at the old woman vendor. And while this may sound daunting, or tempting to use them to level, believe me when I say it's absolutely worth doing this as soon as possible. An easy way to get a bunch of souls is by killing that troll at the beginning of the forest for the 1.2k. If he stops spawning because you drove him to extinction, farm the large group of soldiers by the tree upstairs. Keep in mind, you don't have to spend it all at once, it is cumulative, so feel free to teleport to the vendor and buy stuff intermittently if you get nervous, you 
will absolutely want a Pharaoh Stone, and I'd suggest exhausting her Life Stones, then buying her Effigy so you can turn human more regularly. Once you spend 10,000 souls, you either need to pick Talk or open a new dialogue with her, and she'll basically say thanks a lot and give you our next broken ring, the Silver Serpent Ring plus one. This ring gives 20% more souls, and it stacks with your Tesseldora set, which means you are now getting 42.5% more souls at the start of the game. I cannot undersell how quickly this adds up and will make you an absolute god, especially if you kill bosses with this. Equip it and never take it off. What this also triggers is once you beat the first boss, the last giant, the old lady will teleport from here to Majula, and then she will have infinite life gems in her inventory. Now that we are farming souls better than the legacy of Cain, you will always have cash to buy more life gems, which means it basically be infinite healing. So yeah, congrats, you now have the strongest possible start ever. Now people say money can't buy happiness. All right, let's go get some more stuff. From here, you're going to continue into the castle until you hit the room full of the ballistas. After baiting the soldiers out and killing them, be sure to head in and downstairs. There are two things in here we're going to want to get. The first is you'll see a mouth on the wall where you can stick that pharaoh stone you found, which will reveal a breakable wall and two chests. Inside one of them, you'll find the Chlorothy ring. This straight up increases stamina regeneration by 12.5%, which is as great as it sounds, so toss that bad boy on. Also in here, you'll find a Titanite chunk, but you can also get a large shard to upgrade your rapier in here as well. There's a door at the far side of the room that you can't open, but if you attack it a few times and run away, the soldiers on the other side will open the door to see what's going on. Kill them, and in this room, you will find a chest with that Titanite shard. As mentioned, keep bumping up the rapier as fast as you can. So you're pretty well equipped for now, so let's progress through the game to get our next OP stuff. First, you're going to need to kill the first boss, the last giant, who's already a joke and will be even more a joke now that you are super strong. After doing so, you can open a door in the back of the castle that leads to the top of the ramparts and the next boss that holds an item we want, the Pursuer. Now, normally, the Pursuer is infamous for being the first skill check of the game, where he's a fast-moving and tough foe to fight. There are tricks to killing him, predominantly around parrying, but if you really just want to establish dominance and murder him, no issues, just do as follows. Upon entering the area, head to the left towards the Ballista. You shouldn't need to run, and you want to get the Pursuer to be farish from the Ballista, but still in line with it. Once you get to that Ballista, mash use, and you'll shoot the Pursuer with the Ballista Bolt, stunning him and doing a truckload of damage. And hey, it worked once, let's do it again. Reload the Ballista and fire again, and it should kill him instantly. Congrats, you passed the skill check with zero skill. Now, if you failed the Ballista stuff or stuff is not quite lining up, you can fight him traditionally. As I mentioned, he's very weak to parries, but the Ballista trick will work if you give it enough practice. Regardless, the Pursuer drops the Ring of Blades, an absurd ring with a rapier. It adds a flat 20 damage to every weapon attack, meaning it's not great on slow weapons and is completely busted on fast ones like a rapier. Equip this and never take it off. All right, so if I'm being honest from here, you're pretty much set, but there is one more ring you can consider and it is in the next area. If you get over to Hyde's Tower of Flame and fight your way to the left side of the stage, you will eventually fight through a dragon and there will be an optional boss, the old dragon slayer, aka Ornstein. You shouldn't be too hard if you've done any level grinding and upgrade your rapier, so kill him and steal his ring, the old Leo ring. Now the old Leo ring boosts thrust weapon counter damage by 12.5%, which I will need to explain what that means. Dark Souls 2 has a unique mechanic where if you attack an enemy while they are in an attack animation, this counts as a counter attack and you do a ton more damage. As you can imagine, when fighting bosses that have big wind ups and wind downs, the window for when the game considers in an attack can be huge, meaning you can do tons of bonus damage. Not only that, the rapier has an absurd counter attack stat, 140, one of the best in the game, so adding this ring is just more absurd. The downside, of course, is now we have five rings and only four fingers. I personally axed the stone ring, though I did swap it in and out depending on the situation. I basically never took the ring of blades and silver serpent ring off personally, but how you mix and match is up to you. Okay, so you have a billion souls now. What do you want to level up? Well, Dark Souls 2 is somewhat even more obtuse than Dark Souls 1, especially around agility and ADP, so I'm gonna actually explain that really fast. Adaptability or ADP is a new stat that's only in Dark Souls 2 because it's bad, or rather the stat it's paired with is bad, agility. Allow me to explain. In the previous Souls games, your total gear weight determined the type of roll you did as well as its iframes. If you're too heavy, you'd fat roll and have less iframes, super light, you'd have a fast roll, etc. In Dark Souls 2, your roll animation does not change. Weight instead determines your stamina use and regen, which is actually also why the Tessildura set is really great. It's light, so your stamina regen is high. However, your iframes on this never changing roll do themselves change based on your agility. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but basically you want your agility at 99 as quickly as possible, and this is where the first really good break point is, and will make your rolls actually kind of feel usable. You get that by leveling ADP, and it should be somewhere in the mid-20s. After that, I would bump your endurance to 20, as that is the soft cap, and gives you a bunch of stamina. I'd also just dropping points in vigor now and again for health. You want your dex to get to 40, which is the first soft cap for that, and then you should push your ADP to its mid-30s, your agility hits 105. Once you are there, you are basically set for the rest of the game. Beyond that, put points in dex of strength as you wish, whichever bumps up damage for your weapon. And again, don't forget to put points in vigor, but you do get diminishing returns past 20, and basically nothing past 50, so don't go higher than 50. For endurance, I almost never go past 20 because its soft cap is really bad. And honestly, that's it for leveling. It's very simple. If you feel you're dying too much, feel free to upgrade your armor with leftover titanite. But remember, bumping health or vigor 
Dagger is usually the better option. So we have five absurd rings, an armor set that is going to make us rich, the best weapon in the game, and an absurdly strong start. Where do we go from here? Well, you're going to want a bow, but honestly, anyone will work. Basically, it's just because there are enemies you can't melee in the game, and this will take care of them. I usually end up getting my strength to 20 and getting the Dragon Rider's bow from Strayed. I also grab the Blossom Kite Shield in Sinner's Rise, as is both a shield and grant stamina regen, which is useful. Other than that, you're honestly set to go. Go poke everything in the game to death with obscene damage, watch everything stagger to death before your duelist might, and prepare to become the next king with little to no effort. You're going to have so many souls and so many levels, you won't know what to do with yourself, so get out there and beat Dark Souls 2. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize for the delay between guides, but you know, I've been playing a lot of other games, but I hope this guide really helps you with Dark Souls 2, and I hope this build helps you crush it entirely. If you liked the video, please be sure to like and subscribe and do all that crap that everyone asks you to do at the end of the video. This is still a very small channel, so anything you do helps. But regardless, go out there and enjoy yourself some Dark Souls 2.